If you've watched any videos on intermittent fasting, you've likely heard people singing its praises as a miracle cure to a whole host of life's problems. Fans remark, you'll feel wonderful. You'll have mental clarity and the weight will come off without you even feeling hungry. Today, we are going to examine what the latest science says when it comes to intermittent fasting, focusing specifically on weight loss. Is this a genuinely helpful approach or another fad diet soon to be relegated to the food bin of history? After watching this video, you'll have a much better idea if IF is the right approach for you. You'll be able to avoid many of the common mistakes people make and understand who should definitely not try IF. If you're interested in this topic, you're likely looking for a weight loss approach that works for you, or you're wondering if IF has unique health benefits you shouldn't miss out on. As you likely know, sticking to a traditional, reduced calorie diet long enough to achieve any amount of significant weight loss can be very difficult. The negative health effects of excess weight are well known, so is IF worth considering? You've probably noticed IF diets have become very popular over the past few years. They are often mentioned in social media posts as a one-size-fits-all solution owing to their simplistic nature, especially when compared to calorie counting. You would be right to assume that there is a lot of hype and unsubstantiated claims when it comes to IF. So let's find out together if the claims are supported by the evidence. For those of you new to the channel, I'm Rob, I'm a registered dietitian specialising in chronic conditions. I translate the science of health, nutrition and performance into practical guidance to help you live a healthier and happier life. To start today's episode, let's explore the three most popular types of IF you can choose from. First, we have alternate day fasting. This approach involves a fast day alternating with a feast day. On the fast days, you have two options. You either go zero calorie and only consume water or cut your energy intake to 25% of your estimated needs. Secondly, we have the 5-2 diet. This is a modified version of alternate day fasting, which involves two fast days and five feast days. It's up to you whether you want to schedule your fast days next to each other or not. Finally, we have time-restricted eating or TRE. This approach is a little different in that it requires you to fast every day for a specified amount of time. If following this plan, you would keep all of your eating within a certain window of time. The least restrictive would typically be a 12-hour fast followed by a 12-hour feeding window. We would call this 12-12. The most attractive feature of this diet for many is the fact you don't need to monitor how much you eat during these windows. So now you understand some of the different approaches you can take, let's see how they stack up when it comes to reducing body weight. Studies have found that alternate day fasting and the 5-2 diet can result in 4-8% weight loss over the first 12 weeks. After this, weight loss typically tends to plateau. Time-restricted feeding seems to result in a lower weight loss during this time of just 3-4%, although there are no studies examining this method beyond 12 weeks. These fasting protocols have proven successful for people living with overweight or obesity, helping them to lose approximately 0.2 to 0.5 kilograms per week. Results did not seem to vary when accounting for gender or menopausal status. People living with pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes also lost similar amounts of weight to those without the conditions. Okay, so let's say you've lost the weight. Now let's explore how these approaches compare when it comes to keeping the weight off. It appears both alternate day fasting and the 5-2 diet can help you maintain your weight loss when utilising the weight maintenance phases of the diet. This allows you to approximately double your energy intake to 1,000 to 1,200 calories on fast days. This is important as utilising this phase may help you stick to the diet long term. There is currently no evidence examining the effectiveness of TRE for weight maintenance. However, you could likely slightly increase the length of your eating window and assess weight change to find your acceptable limit. Ultimately, it appears fasting is no more effective at eliciting weight loss when compared to traditional dieting, in which you have implemented a calorie restriction. Another important factor to consider when following a weight loss diet is how it impacts on your body composition. When implementing a calorie deficit, it is quite normal for around a quarter of the weight loss to come from lean mass, including muscle tissue. Some have suggested that fasting is a superior form of weight loss for holding on to muscle. Unfortunately, it appears fasting results in similar reductions of fat and lean mass as traditional dieting. 
If you are implementing a calorie deficit, regardless of the diet used to achieve this, we see significant benefits to the amount of muscle tissue maintained if you include some form of resistance training. This does not have to involve pumping iron in the gym. Any form of movement through space that challenges your body should be beneficial. Next, let's talk about energy intake. This is today's key point. The main reason fasting can result in weight loss is due to the calorie deficit it creates. If following one of these plans, you could see a reduction in consumed calories by an estimated 10 to 30%. A common objection to fasting diets is that you could make up for this deficit on feast days, as these are generally unrestricted. However, we are starting to learn that this is not the case. Although you may consume above your daily energy needs on feast days, you are unlikely to make up for this deficit incurred on fasting days, especially when we examine your energy requirements over a longer time period. This observation extends to time-restricted eating also. You will typically not be able to eat the same amount of calories as you did in an unrestricted eating window. This form of fasting can result in an unplanned reduction of consumed calories by uh, 10 to 30%. The simplicity of this approach allows many people to adhere to the diet for much longer than traditional calorie counting or alternate day fasting as there is no requirement to measure your intake. However, the total amount of weight lost with this approach tends to be lower and may be insufficient to help you reach your weight goals. So who shouldn't fast? I would suggest caution if you have a history of eating disorder or low self-esteem, poor body image, disordered eating behaviours or internalised weight bias. Although, to put this in context, I would extend these cautions to a variety of weight loss approaches and not just fasting. We still don't have enough evidence to examine fasting's impact on age-related muscle loss either. Therefore, caution is advised in elderly individuals over the age of 70. If you need to take medication with food, you may also find fasting regimes difficult to implement safely. Fasting does not appear to negatively affect people's ability to exercise. However, for those interested in maximising their performance, nutrient timing plays a significant role, and fasting may make this more difficult. As with any calorie restriction diet, you should ensure you get at least 50 grams of protein on fast days to help you minimise any muscle breakdown. When considering the longer term implications of fasting, we still don't have good evidence to appraise fasting's ability to help people manage their weight. However, evidence appears to show that fasting does not reduce resting metabolic rate any further than traditional dieting. Therefore, if it works for you and you are confident that you are able to follow one of these approaches long term whilst minimising the risk of any nutrient deficiencies, negative impacts on your psychological health and social life, then I'd say it's worth a try. You may have heard about a range of other health benefits IF may bring other than weight loss. If this is something you'd like me to explore in a future video, please let me know down in the comments. If you are considering implementing a weight loss diet, I highly recommend you check out my video on energy balance, which you can find here. This will clearly explain the factors that contribute to your weight, many of which go beyond just diet. This knowledge will give you a much better chance of successfully losing weight if this is your goal. Anyway, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. And as always, this is your weekly reminder to never stop learning because life never stops teaching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.